normally see them at school. And so they, it's what draws them there. And it's what makes them want to finish it. It gives them a point of pride about being at school. I unfortunately didn't have those options when I was in school for like career technical education where I went to school. So for me, it was, and, and it wasn't an option not to go to school. My parents wouldn't let me do that. But for me, I was doing like you, everything from, you know, if sports that were in to playing, uh, doing literary, if it was going on, I was willing to do it just because it would make school more interesting. And I had phenomenal teachers. It wasn't anything about them. Yeah. It's just when you get stuck in a classroom doing the same thing, you, you lose that why you're doing it. And when you find a why, that, then, it, then it gets a light at the end of the tunnel that you want to head towards. You know, I could do this. Oh, uh, oh, oh, yes, agreed. And, you know, just to bounce on that a tiny bit more, I look at um, my history. I was a probation officer for a long time. And I saw a lot of kids who failed math early in elementary school. That's why I'm so possessed about teaching little kids that want to make math fun early. Well, then when you start to look at career and technical education, we make math fun. You can mm -hmm. eat pizza and cake and then build pretty things and then make music. And it's, it's all of it. And so that's, I think, such a gift that then students who might have failed on a test really get to show they're incredibly smart, but just in a different way. And that might be by making cabinets, you know, following heartbeats, like all sorts of cool science with that. Um, oh, it's always a good chat with you, Matthew. It, there, it, and, and not to belay that point, but for academics, they're, they're, they're in a bound because they, they're, they usually have to be assessed at a test in the semester. There's very little room for mistake there. So a lot of everything they have to do is when you're teaching math, it's directed towards don't mess this up, don't mess this up, there's no chance. And so, you know, you can't, and so everything kind of gets built on it. And that's not what teachers teach in those areas, but what students start picking up over time. But when they get to the career and technical education, agricultural education, it's okay. It's a, it's a safe opportunity environment to learn from your failures and mistakes and, and encouraged to make those. Whereas kids come in stressed to death about a test, and then they, they, the first time they cut a board the wrong way, they're all panicky. I'm like, just get another board. Yeah. Let's do it again. And, and then they started to realize, okay, you know, we don't want to continue to make the same mistake, but I, it's okay for me to make a mistake. I can learn from these. And that's another reason I think it it's a, takes the stress off of them, you know, for a lot of things. They can achieve the things they want to achieve, and they get to make their own stress levels, meaning I really want this project to come out well. It didn't, but now I'm going to learn how to make it better the next time. Yes, yes. And these are qualities that we want in human beings going forward, meaning like knowing how to fail. That is a great spot. If you didn't make your lawnmower run, well, ta-da, you failed. You know, now you got to you got to problem solve. Mm -hmm. It's another quality we want in communication. And really, this leads to, I think, greater success post-graduation, because we we do know from ACTE that a four year degree or we've heard for a while, you know, we've heard this stat like it's it, it was the myth for a long time that we had to go to college to be successful. But ACTE actually has the updated statistic that says an individual with CTE degrees can earn up to $2.8 million in a lifetime, which is equal to many jobs with a bachelor's degree, if not way more, in the sense too that we don't carry the debt for that education. Normally you're paid for it throughout that opportunity. And so why do you think more students are now looking to associate degree programs as pathways to success? And then how can teachers not only, I want, to, I want teachers to encourage that, but then break the notion that the only pathway to success is college. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're saying the associate degree, not associate a degree, right? That's what you were saying. Yeah. Yes, sorry. Uh, That's okay. Words. Yeah, yeah. I thought that's what you were referring to. I just want to make sure I was clear on it. because So, with an associate degree, it's the biggest thing is teachers promote whatever is best or whatever their students are trying to achieve. Um, most every, especially academic, but it's CTA teachers I've met, even though they teach construction, if they had students in there who were passionate about learning, they didn't care if the student was going to be a musician or a doctor later on, they, they, they promoted the learning. And so if an associate degree is pushed more or is that is what a student is seeking, then the teacher is going to support it. I don't have many, I don't, I don't know any teachers that, that say, no, no, don't go out to that. And so the problem that we're seeing nowadays is there's such a need for skilled talent out there that there's no time to go get one. They're snatching them out of high school as fast as they can find them. 
And so when are you going to go get the associate's degree? Now, you know, again, if you're working for an industry partner or a company who's promoting that, hey, we're going to help you go to get it, then I think that's going to be the case. Teachers will promote whatever's working best for those students, whatever is the better opportunities in those areas. Uh, you know, again, you may come across some, well, that one didn't. Most every teacher I know, most every member of our association, they do. They, they will tell you secretly off the books. They don't really care if they go all into construction. They want to see the students succeed. And whatever that success pathway is, whether it's a four-year degree or an associate's degree, or if it's, you know, work-based learning and then graduating and starting the next day on a job, that's what the teachers are going to promote. They're, it's, it's funny, they have a lot of influence, but very little influence as far as what the student is going to strive to do as far as, you know, if I started saying, hey, go get an associate's degree, I could say it 20 days in a row, Kayleen could drop in one day and mention an associate's degree and they'll be like, hey, do you hear about associate's degree? <laughs> and uh, so- yeah. Teenagers, I think maybe that's one of the things we always have to remember, but you're right. Good teachers teach great things and encourage their students to thrive in life. And it's wonderful now seeing the notion that it is. It's encouraging all the pathways and college is great. I'm not, I knock it slightly because the investment I think needs to be researched before you actually go down that pathway, but we need people who take that path, but we need folks who are doing other things. And you mentioned something that yes, kids are getting snatched up right out of high school so fast. And this is amazing because I think in the future, we're gonna see those companies then paying for their associate's degrees. So still continuing education, but free, which is pretty stinking awesome. So love it. Um, so Georgia ACTE just held its 75th, 75th, congratulations, annual conference. That's humongous and same thing to celebrate. What was the theme of the conference? And then what were the marching orders for the attendees? So, you know, everybody's still coming out of the, what I call the COVID mothballs of, you know, running a conference again. Uh, and so for us to be able to celebrate 75 years of having conferences and going through the different changes of names, like I think every association has done over the years, uh, this one was celebrating excellence because that was what the focus was about, about celebrating. And we're nothing without the members and the members are those teachers, those administrators, counselors. And so when we talked about celebrating excellence. It was about celebrating them and, and their achievements. The, the ironic or whatever you want to call it, the word that's apropos for this, teachers are the worst self-promoters because intrinsically they're doing it for other people. And so what they're doing in their programs uh, needs to be celebrated, what they're bringing to the success of their, um, for the students' opportunities, creating those opportunities that needs to be so, we were celebrating success. The, I guess if you want to call it the marching orders that came away from that is how do we continually improve? How do we continually bring better content, professional development, networking opportunities? And so this year's theme that we're going to, that we're going with that I really am going to try to push and get behind is something that should resonate with you is going to be the story of. And so basically we're going to try to get these teachers, get our members to relay and tell their stories because it needs to be known. It is the biggest veil that is dropped between the worlds of even academics to CTE, but even beyond the world of education. Um, you know, so what is it, who is it that's known? And so it needs to be like when you have new parents that I'm often reminded of the family guy thing with the guy like shoving his wallet into the face of other people. Look at my kids, look at my kids, look at my kids. And so how we communicate that, how we tell those stories and how do we get them across to the people who need to see them uh, in order to continue the great work that all these teachers are doing and, and be able to support it the right way. Georgia ACTE is very, very lucky to have you as their president this year because you are definitely forward thinking and you're right. Um, I was watching ESPN the other day and they had tag on. And then I look at the Skills USA national competition and thought, why aren't we showing this off and celebrating it the same way? So I'm happy that you're really encouraging your members and you'll definitely set the best practices for the rest of the uh, national side because it's time. It's time we start to share those stories instead of just driving by and being like, I built that. I built that. <laughs> I built that. <laughs> like, yeah. And we have to do it in a way that power. people, because nobody reads anymore. Like uh, everybody's too busy. Uh, life doesn't allow us to sit down and read through articles like we want to. So uh, it's all about how to create that new content 
and tell the story in a way that's easily digestible. Um, you know, there's so many avenues now. The problem we face is the overflow of information. So how do you make sure your information is what's being seen by the people that need to see it? So, yeah, it's definitely forward thinking. It is definitely a high reaching goal. But I think that if we're going to continue to support, you know, the people who are doing the great works in the schools, then that's what we're going to have to do. Agreed. And, you know, just for our viewers to uh, tuning in, Matthew is so cutting edge. He let me know today that they no longer make uh, books on tape. It's not actually audiobooks. Uh, all right. Always, always learning something new. But OK, so we're talking about supporting teachers and I'm happy that you were, you know, celebrating their excellence because it's been a rough few years, but they are so critical to fixing sort of the workforce shortage or even employing great people. But let's talk about the career pipeline on the teacher end. Um, is there a shortage of teachers to promote the trades? It's a silly question to ask. I love it. What, is, what are your thoughts? Oh, please. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, I can't think of the best analogy you'll be able to say. Is that like saying, you know, water's deep and cold in the ocean? You know, uh, so the answer to the question, that's an easy cupcake one. Yes, there is a teacher shortage. Uh, there will probably for now and forever more be a teacher shortage because I don't know if we'll ever be able to catch up to the trends of growth of the population uh, in a downward spiral. And, and there are avenues and areas that have done a phenomenal job of creating their own teacher pipeline. And I'm thinking about ag and, and they've always created their own uh, the teachers who come into those have usually they, they went through the ag program. They were in FFA. They did those things and came back around. And we don't have that in some of the other areas. It's something we need to try to emulate and do. And this is going to take work from our state legislators, federal legislators on coming up with creative ways to help us curb this, because talking about recruitment is one thing. But if you don't stop the bleeding, then you know, no matter how much blood you put in, it's not going to save the life of whatever it is you're working on. So we've got to find a way to keep the teachers. And the problem is, is that the CTA, you're talking about some of the most skilled and talented people in the world and asking them to stop being skilled and talented in one area and come and share that knowledge they have uh, to students and, and to do so is they're, they're being, they're torn, you know, they could do so much in industry that can make, there's so many opportunities for them because they are so skilled and talented. Not that academic teachers are not, but you're talking about specialized talent in some of these areas uh, that is very hard to come across. No, they cannot keep nursing teachers in the uh, programs. It just, so it's such high demand in the industry itself. And so uh, there've gotta be creative ways. There've gotta be some more adaptable practices that take place uh, to be able to kind of curb this recruitment because I still contend the most valuable asset that any school has is that instructor because you could take away the building, you could take away the books, you could take away everything, but if you put a, the good teacher and students together, they'll find a way to get the information to them. And right. so without that person, it's much harder to do. So yes, there is a teacher shortage and there's a lot of different avenues to it. And I think there's some people doing some great initiatives uh, we just got to find a way to connect those silos of those initiatives to be able to kind of uh, curb this because and unfortunately we're losing that game right now. It is. You're correct. And I'm happy that you're aware of it and really being forward thinking. And so besides your um, awesome, awesome mindset, what is Georgia ACTE doing to help instructors be able to train students in careers in specific trades with that talent? Because sometimes I am seeing that fewer and fewer schools have technical education or maybe it's very sporadic so it's the easiest thing thing to say but the hardest thing for people to actually do but what we're trying to do is listen and when we listen we find out what they need to to be better to be able to implement that and then we try to provide that whether it's training whether it is contacts with industry partnering with organizations like construction ready and in AGC of Georgia and many other ones, and I'm mentioning those because of the work that I do directly on my every day to day job, but being able to get those industry partners in there to support uh, providing training, providing the most up to date, what's happening in industry. Um, you know, most great leaders that I've seen understand where they lead and where the, the experts need to step in. And then they want to provide that opportunity for those experts to help the instructors who are experts in their own rights. Uh, much more than anybody else. And so just the main thing that George ACT is trying to do is 
get that awareness advocacy to the people who are going to make decisions on helping them in the classrooms, uh, whether that be legislators or industry partners. And then the other part is making sure that we're providing training or training opportunities, partnering with like CTERN, which is the CTA, CTAE resource network in Georgia, and also our, our awesome uh, Department of Education staff members working with them um, to, to make sure that we're getting the right training at the right time for our instructors. Yes, which is so critical because, um, well, you learn for life and it is, nobody wants to fail. So having the right training all the way around, but especially coming out of industry, teenagers are scary. Sometimes I wear fake tattoos to be around them because they're, they're tough, but they're, it's not that bad. Definitely worth the opportunity. And I hope, I hope that we do have some wonderful folks listening to this and consider actually teaching because I think sometimes it's not only the pay decrease, but it's the lack of support, it's the training, it's just such unknown water. And so it's really refreshing to hear how Georgia ACTE is supporting their members with opportunities like that. Like you're not alone, you're not a silo. We see your silo, we're driving over to say hi. And I will say that to, to any new teachers, anybody that does listen or happen to listen to this or because of any other reason they go into the classroom, you've got to give it some time. There are the, there are the immediate payoffs and the projects and things like that you do, but it's a longer investment. You've got to get those students out there at, to, to then come back and, you know, show the show what that teaching and what they provided to them. Because that, you know, most of the ones I've seen, the, the, the great teachers, they're, they're retired from CNN, they're retired from, you know, owning their own company, or some of them still own their own company, and they want to give back so they're in the classroom teaching. But just listen to them in the passion they have for the students that have come back. But if you're a new teacher, seek one of them out, reach out to us, we'll, 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 we'll point you in the direction of a, you know, a mentor teacher or someone like that, but just listen to them when they talk about what the rewards are. It is like you said, Kayleen, you know, money is going to be one of those things. And sadly, it's needed all over the place. I don't think anybody's ever going to turn down a pay raise. Um, and so but the other parts of it are just uh, you've been around it. You've been you've seen it per, firsthand. I think that's why you're addicted to these events and conferences, because you've seen the impact on the students and the teachers have and stuff. So I consider myself to be rich beyond imagine because I'm involved in education. Uh, and so it's. It's true, and I, it's, a, it's a different payoff, and it's one that I don't know, it's, it's pretty good. You have to find the balance. And so with that, and I love how you did mention, because I hope we have a lot of new teachers coming through. Where, where can they find out more information? How can you be reached? So you can go to constructionready.org and reach me through our site there under the employee list. Ignore the profile picture, which never works out well for me. Uh, or you could find us on gacte.org. Um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. I think most of them are Coach M. White, just back because I felt like that was a better title than a doctor or anything like that. Having the title coach uh, is something that I earned over the years of education. And I think once you earn the title of coach, you don't want to give it up. So I usually go with that. Um, yeah, I could be reached anywhere, but reach out to the, there's so many different divisions, a program specialist of the DOE, CTERN Resource Network. If you're interested in teaching, um, you know, you've got so many access points, but the Georgia DOE CTAE page is a great one, yes. but you feel free to come to the uh, Georgia ACTE website, which is gacte.org again. Uh, basically, I think my contact information is matthew.white at sepka.org or at constructionready.org, whichever one you feel like typing out. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Then Jody Reeves is our executive director, and I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to her. She's our executive director since 2018, 2019. I forget the exact point in time when she became official in that regard, but she's doing a great job of leading this association in her role and in advocacy and, and just that, but she really knows how to listen to, to people, instructors, administrators. And so her info, contact information is there on the website. Please feel free to reach out to her as well. Yes, please do. Because again, it's a wonderful, strong organization with a lot of contacts and a great network to participate with. So Matthew, thank you so much for having lunch with me today. This was awesome and a, a good geek out session. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I always enjoy getting a chance to spend a few minutes with Kayleen McCabe. I think 
I was in doing interviews yesterday for a position that was nom being nominated. We haven't choose the nominees and your name got thrown out a few times there on them knowing you. And I was like, huh, oh, she's just all over the place. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here today and get to talk about Georgia ACTE and uh, the work we're doing construction ready as well. Yes, both. What is happening in Georgia is always so strong from construction ready to uh, what the legislation's put into place. It's it's better than other places that I've seen in the nation. So um, bravo and thank you for continuing to make it even better. And I cannot wait to see what, what influence comes out of your presidency. Thank you. I hope to not disappoint. So thank <laughs> you again for having me. All right. Thanks, Matthew. See you later.